Hi Year 13s, um, this video is going to show you something new on your calculator. It's in three parts. One is the warning, two is showing you the lovely new stuff, and three is how to make sure you can get that lovely new stuff. Okay, so the warning. First of all, only watch this video if it's not going to um, get you stressed out about your Pure and Stats exam. So if you're happy with what you already know, stick with that. Um, if you're happy and you'll be comfortable with finding something new on your calculator um, before Tuesday, uh, then continue watching. OK, it's something that will that makes some statistics a lot easier. OK. Right. So let's uh, let's show you what there is. So the latest operating system of the calculator um, has got a new menu on it, which is very exciting. So it's um, called the distribution menu, and you find it by scrolling down um, quite near the bottom. There's the distribution menu. It's menu I for me. OK, and then you get your distribution. So we're going to do a couple of examples to see how it works, but it's really intuitive. OK, so here's the first example. It's just going to be finding some probabilities. So suppose we have a normal distribution. So I'm going to go down on the calculator. OK, to normal distribution, press execute. And I want to find the probability that X is greater than 15 when I've got a mean of 20 and a variance of 9. So I'm looking at greater than, so I'm going to choose from the bottom the greater than option. And my x is 15. And remember, this is sigma, which is the standard deviation, not the variance. So I have to square root the 9. That gives me 3. And my mean is 20. OK. And now if I execute, that draws the probability, which is lovely, which we like to encourage you to do. Um, so at the top, you can see here the probability x is greater than or equal to 15 is 0 0.9522. And it's got a summary of what distribution we're looking at and the picture. Now, um, so I could write that down if I wanted to. So I'd write on my... Uh, sorry, I'd write down my answer. So 0 0.9522. But um, suppose if I actually just wanted 15.4 instead, then I would just go back onto my calculation, just edit. I want 15.4, please. And it works out that probability. Um, and similarly, uh, I can also um, have a closer look at the probability that it gives me. So if I go on there, at the top it's got advice, it says options F1. So you press option and F1 and that lets you see if you needed more decimal places, it lets you see that probability. OK, now this is going to help us for the second part of the question, which is find X so that the probability that X is less than that value is 0 0.1. So I'm now going to go to the calculator and change it to the less thans tail. And I'm going to change the probability to be 0 0.1. And that has automatically worked out for me my x value. So I could write down that the answer for that is that x, little x, is equal to 16.16. OK. If I wanted to see it in detail, I'd have options and then edit. If you can't see these things at the bottom of the screen at all, you press options and then F1. OK, right. The second question is using a binomial distribution with 20 trials and 0.3 of success. And I just want this probability. So on my calculator, I'm going to exit until I'm back to the select distribution bit. So I'm going to the binomial. OK, and I want the in between one. So I'm going to use F2 to get that. And my lower value is um, 5. And my upper value is 7. I have got 20 trials and the chance of success is 0 0.3. And then I can draw that. And look, it's drawn it as bars, which is super. And it's given me that probability. And again, you can just edit either the probability, which will make it symmetric, um, for the values or uh, edit your values instead of five and seven I could have one and seven whatever I want okay 
So on the, um, I'm going to write down my answer for that. Okay, right. Now that's handy and it's nice and visual and you can see what's going on and you don't have to draw your pictures on your paper if you don't want to because you've got them on the calculator. Okay. Now, where it comes in really handy is when we're finding critical regions. So first of all, um, let's have a go at a normal hypothesis test where we're testing a two-tailed alternative, the mean against um, uh, equal to 20 against not equal to 20. <coughs> I have a sample size of 10. So I've got my distribution of the sample mean, remember, for normal hypothesis testing. So I have to do the variance divided by sample size, so in this case 10. Um, I'm going to find a critical region for the 5% significance level. So on my calculator, I exit until I can see I want the normal distribution, and I go execute. Okay, and uh, we want the middle one. We don't want two tilled, we want the middle one. Now this time the area shaded in is kind of the acceptance region, so I'm going to just draw on here just to help us set up our parameters. So if we're doing two tails, sorry, it's very wobbly, we want 5% in the tails, so this bit in the middle is going to be 95%. Okay. Oh, sorry, this isn't working very well. There we go. Um, so I have no idea what the numbers are going to be on the x-axis, so I'll just leave the lower and upper tail ex oops, exactly how they are on the calculator at the minute. But I need to change my standard deviation to be the square root of 9 over 10, so 0 0.9. My mean is 20. Let's have a look. OK. Oh, so it's already got it. So you would type in for the probability 0 0.95, and it then finds the critical region values. OK, so those are called the critical values. So we can write those down if we wanted to on here. So we've got 18.14, and the other one is 21.86. So my critical region would be x is less than 18.14, union with x is greater than 21.86. OK, now let's just suppose that I've got the standard deviation wrong. I need to go back. Then you just press exit until you go back to that screen and you could just change the standard deviation to whatever it is. Let's say it's 1.2. And then we sketch again. And then you just change your probability to be what you want it to be. And you get your new values. OK, right. And then everyone's favourite. It's the binomial hypothesis test. So we're testing the p-value is 0.4, sorry, the probability of success is 0.4 against uh, probabilities greater than 0.4 at the 5% significance level, and we've got 40 trials. Okay, so let's have a little go at that. So on the calculator, we exit, and we exit again, and we go up to the binomial, and then we want a greater than one. Okay, I don't know what x is going to be, no idea. Um, I've got 40 trials and the probability of success is 0.4. Let's draw that. OK, so we want a 5% significance level. So I type in 0 0.05. Now that's given me more than 0.05. But I'm going to write this down. So the probability that x is greater than or equal to 21 is 0 0.0743, which is 2 uh, bigger probability, that's bigger than 5%. So then I go back to the calculator and I know that I'm going to have to look at 22 and see if that one gives me a smaller, well it will give me a smaller probability, but if it's smaller than 5%. And yes it does. So then I write that down. Probability that x is greater than or equal to 22 is 0 0.0391 which is less than 5%, and there you go, I've justified my critical region, which is x is greater than or equal to 22. That's the critical region. Okay, 
Um, so hopefully you can see how intuitive that is and it's lovely to have the diagrams and you just edit um, as you can see it. Um, so if I had a different number of trials, I'd have to exit and change my fee on my number of trials. All right. So any calculator that has got the um, right operating system, the latest one, will have this distribution on it. So if you want to find out which operating system you've got, you click on, you go into the system menu, okay, and then you want to check your version, okay, so that's F4, and we can see that this is version 3.6. So I think it has to be 3.6 um, in order to have this because it's a very recent edition. OK, now, if you don't have that, I will be emailing you this link. Where is it gone? Oh, operating files. There we go. Um, so I'll email this link with the operating system update and you can watch the video on how to install it if you want. But basically, you download this, you open the execute file and you need to hunt out the wire that connects your calculator to a USB port on your computer, okay? And then you follow the instructions as to when to plug it in and what to do on your calculator. So it does help you through it. If you're at all frightened of that, then we can help you do that in school. It has to be when one of us has a computer available because we have to go into administrative mode. We can't just do it in the middle of teaching. OK, and um, so, for example, we can do it in drop in tonight. We could do it in one of the registration drop ins in the morning or any other time you're coming in, maybe lunchtime or something. OK, so I hope that helps and doesn't frighten you. Now I'm going to send two other links and that is Casio's version of how to use it. So if you um, use this link, you watch the video, you'll have to keep pausing because it goes quite fast but it shows you how to use that distribution menu for finding critical values with binomial, and then also the same for the normal. Okay, I hope that has been useful, and good luck for your exams.